What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be interesting, I hope. Basically what I'm going to do is talk about this system that you're looking at in front of you. So you probably saw the video where I introduced this and I actually used this the day I got it to weigh the pin weight of our Coachman Brookstone. And if you didn't watch that video, go back and check it out because it's, uh, it's definitely interesting how the numbers looked. And to have a scale that's as accurate as this one providing me that information is critical it's just it's really good information to have so you know I'm, I'm thrilled to death to have this equipment and I think that uh, that you're gonna be pretty impressed by what it's capable of but more importantly I wanted to talk a little bit further in depth on what this equipment is so hang tight I'll be right back All right, so what you're looking at is a setup from a company called Celaton. Celaton produces scales, all sorts of different types of scales, from the type that you drive vehicles onto um, at a commercial you know, factory, from the type that you might have outside of a truck stop. So what they do is very important and very critical for many industries who have to get it right, especially whenever you are talking about equipment that needs to be weighed before it can go on trucks, because I think everyone realizes now that the cost of freight has gone up tremendously and getting your weight right is pretty dang important. Anyways, what you were looking at in front of you is really a combination of things. First over here on the left, this is the display or an indicator. And this specific one is called the SL7510 SSC12, which essentially is a full stainless steel wash down capable indicator. It's rated for IP68. So basically this thing's designed so you can spray it down if you get anything on it. And they make different flavors of pretty much all this stuff designed for you know use in intrinsically safe environments, which is essentially equipment that won't create a spark, which could cause an explosion, stuff like that. The scale itself, is the SL800, it's a three foot by three foot scale. It's NTEP certified, which essentially is a certification program needed for transportation industry if you're gonna be hauling stuff around. Uh, this is a floor scale and they offer this in five different capacities. The specific one in front of us is the 10,000 pound rated scale and it has a two pound accuracy based on it. Now, they have a 20,000 pound version of this with five pound accuracy. They have a 5,000 pound, a 2,500 pound, and a 1,000 pound, all with very, very, high accuracy. I think the 5,000 pound is a pound. The 2,500 pound capacity scale is half a pound accuracy and the 1,000 pound scale is 0.2 pound accuracy, which honestly makes these probably more accurate than your house floor scale that you use to weigh yourself. So pretty, pretty cool. They even offer this stuff in stainless steel, which is pretty amazing. But when I filmed the video, the original video that I, I showcased this whenever I got it, Something I did that I kind of regret, but now I don't regret because it gives me an opportunity to talk about this, was to have this panel open, which there's two screws that hold this panel down. And typically if you purchase this with the standard display, they package everything under this panel. This is kind of like a storage compartment. But I had this open and there were a lot of wires that were visible. Since then, they've all been cleaned up. Now, a lot of people are wondering why were there so many wires available in here? And the reason why is because in many installation environments, they don't put anything in here. This is simply the storage for the equipment when it's shipped, but then this, this box right here, this junction box is mounted externally. So they give you enough slack and wire to be able to do what you need to do with this equipment. Now, a lot of people will just keep it housed inside of here like I did, and I've cleaned up all the wiring and made it look really nice and neat. But it's basically set up so you can move it externally if you want to, you can move it to a separate box, or you can just bundle it up and put it inside of here like I've done. What you're looking at next to it is an optional accessory. This right here is a wireless transmitter that connects to this wireless receiver that then connects to the Celaton display right here. Now, how does this work? This has a rechargeable battery inside of it, this does not, but it receives power from the rechargeable battery that's inside of this. So this is completely wireless. When you get the system, initially, it's actually gonna come with a wire that connects from this module or junction box to this controller directly, and you don't have to have a wireless connection. But for how I plan on using this, we determined that wireless would work best, simply because if we're gonna be putting something heavy on it here, I might be sitting you know, a ways away from it, or we may be measuring maybe pin weight in the back of the truck, or I might be putting something on top of it and I'll be in the cab of a vehicle and I don't want to have to run a cord. So having a display with up to like a 300 foot range is pretty important. And this is what this permits. 
So in an industrial environment, the only thing you'd want to keep in mind is that if you don't have this constantly plugged into power, you're going to have to recharge this and you'll have to recharge this. As far as the receiver goes, it receives its power again from this Celaton display, which has the battery built into it. So very, very cool how this works. It's all protected. The only piece that I don't want to expose to water if I can avoid it, I believe is going to be this piece right here. This is full washdown capable. And like I said, I mean, I don't believe that water will hurt this that much if it's lightly sprayed on it, or especially if it's covered up through here and it's not really getting contact to water. But I wanna to try to make this stuff last as long as possible. Now, in terms of what you could use this for, there are so many things you can use this for. In, you know, in the last video, I showcased lowering the fifth wheel pin box onto this. And the weight, which again, check out that last video if you want to see how much it was, which was well over a ton, was pretty much placed right in the center right here. And it didn't cause any type of deflection, bending, warping anything of this frame because this frame is one really heavy duty steel chassis. I mean, it's crazy. And the sensors are all spread out to the feet. Now, another really interesting thing that he informed me is that the weight doesn't have to be directly centered over it. You can have the weight slightly offset. Of course, they recommend that you center it as much as possible, but in some cases, it's just not practical to do that. So, you know, you may have a pallet that has a bunch of stuff on it and half the weight just due to whatever's on the pallet and packaged is on one side of the, the actual pallet that you're loading on here. And you're never gonna be able to, to balance it perfectly. So their scale is designed to work in that type of an environment, which is really cool. Now, what I wanna do is I actually wanna demonstrate how effective this is at weighing stuff. So I've accumulated some of my, or at least I've gathered some of my toe hitches and some other things laying over there. And we're gonna go ahead and weigh some of those things so you can get kind of an idea of how much some of this equipment weighs that you put on the back receiver of your vehicle. So the way I'm gonna do this is start this up. First, I'm gonna press this button to turn on the transmitter. Transmitter is powered on. Next, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna turn this on by holding this button down. So the scale is on. I'm gonna make sure I put this cover right here. I keep the screws off. There's no really, you know, great reason for me to have to put them back on, honestly. I'll just set them in there. I'm gonna go ahead and zero out the scale. Now, what I'm gonna do is start grabbing some things and I'm gonna put it on there. But before I do that, actually, let's make sure we're not gonna start scratching up the top of this thing. So I'm gonna put this mat right here. It didn't add any weight to it because it's extremely light foam, but I'm gonna zero it out just in case. And the first thing I'm gonna do is take this coupler. So this is the coupler that came on my Texas Pride trailer. How much do you guys think this coupler weighs? If you wanna look at some of the numbers, 15,000 pound weight capacity, two and five sixteenths inch ball, of course. This thing is super heavy duty, very common on heavy duty cargo trailers or utility trailers, dump trailers, things like that. Let's take a guess, how much do you think it's gonna weigh? I'm gonna put it on the scale in three, two, one. 12 pounds. Thing's pretty heavy, isn't it? Especially for its size. All right, so let's go ahead and take that off. Okay, so next in my pile of stuff over here, I have a way safe aluminum hitch. I'm gonna weigh that last. Let's take this thing right here. This is basically an extension adapter for a three inch receiver, like on my truck, and it receives a two and a half inch shank so this would be if I want to extend the receiver further out on my truck and, uh, and hitch up to a two and a half inch shank versus the three inch receiver that normally is. How much do you think this thing weighs? Ten pounds. So is that lighter or heavier than you thought? Next, let's do this little C channel. So this actually came with the coupler that I replaced on the new utility trailer. Looks like it's half inch thick steel channel. How much do you think this thing weighs? 12 pounds. So the combination of this and this is 24 pounds. Let's see if that adds up. Twenty-four pounds. So yeah, just putting this on your trailer, you've added 24 pounds of weight to it. So this is a Waysafe steel shank. Now a lot of people know Waysafe because of their aluminum hitches, but they also have a steel version of their equipment. And this thing is super heavy duty. 
This is a 20,000 pound rated shank, 2,000 pounds worth of tongue weight capacity. What do you think this shank weighs? Solid steel right here. It's not a not an open or a hollow boxed section. Let's throw this on. Twenty-eight pounds. Just that shank alone weighs twenty-eight pounds. And if you want to know what that goes to, that goes to the weight distribution system that they offer. So when we talk about how heavy weight distribution systems are, the shank alone is 28 pounds. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? All right, let's pull that off. And it is going back down to zero every single time I do this. So let's do this little guy. So this is a 5,000 pound rated hitch. This is a two inch hitch ball, relatively thin. What do you think this bad boy weighs? Eight pounds. So this entire assembly weighs less than either of those individually or even this adapter right here. We having fun yet? Okay, next one, Kurt. So I have a Kurt adjustable hitch right here. Has a two inch shank. So everything else has been two and a half inch except for that last one I just did. Two inch shank channel has both balls, two and a two and five sixteenths inch. This is a really, really cool setup actually. It's one of the more affordable adjustable hitches on the market. Rating 14,000 pound trailer weight, 1,400 pound tongue weight. Even though, honestly, it feels like it's a lot stronger than that. It really does. But what do you think this assembly weighs? Let's find out. 28, almost 30 pounds. Say 29 maybe, split the difference. 29 pounds. So this assembly right here weighs as much as this shank alone does. Just to kind of give you an idea of the difference in construction materials and how it can really affect weight. That shank alone weighs almost as much as this, maybe a pound difference. Next, I have a B&W Toe and Stow tri-ball hitch, two inch shank. What do you think this bad boy weighs? So a two inch shank is gonna be the smallest shank size offered for the B&W Toe and Stow. Right, so they have a two, two and a half, and even a three. So Ford Super Duty and maybe some other trucks can take a three. Most often you're gonna see two and a half inch shanks on this, but this is a two inch shank. What do you think it weighs? Twenty-eight pounds. So so far, the numbers are kind of shocking. So this assembly right here weighs is, weighs a little bit more, two pounds more than both of these combined. If you add this plus that, that would give us 18 pounds. This right here is 28 pounds by itself, which means this entire assembly weighs the same amount as just the shank here. That right there weighs about 30 pounds, 29, 30 pounds. Now this is the largest shank that they offer on a B&W Tow and Stow, three inches. This really, from a pickup truck perspective, will only fit a Ford Super Duty with the correct tow package to give you the three inch receiver. This is tri-ball as well, so you have all three different balls on it. And this is their smallest amount of rise and gain, which I believe is six inches. They make like an eight and a 10 inch, and they make you know taller versions from an adjustability perspective. What, what do you think this weighs? If the other one weighed 28 pounds, what will the three inch shank add in terms of material weight? Let's find out. 32 to 34 pounds. So let's just split the difference, 33 pounds. So the Tone and Stow with the three inch shank weighs actually quite a bit more overall than the two inch shank. Is that surprising to anyone? This area right here is thicker than this area. And of course the shank is significantly larger. Now finally, we're gonna take this beast. Okay, so next, we have the Waysafe aluminum hitch. Now this one actually is not the one that I thought. I have the three inch shank for it, but this is a two and a half inch shank. 
Um, the three inch shank probably does weigh a bit more. It's certainly more material, but this is the three inch. And if you don't know what the way safe hitch is, it is a hitch with a scale in it. So you have the capability of weighing the tongue weight of whatever you put on your vehicle, which is super cool. And this assembly right here is the same for either the two and a half or the three inch shank. Um, I just moved it to my two inch shank, but yeah, this is the slightly smaller two inch shank. But what do you think this bad boy weighs? This is made out of aluminum, not steel. What do you think it is? 16 pounds. So this is significantly lower weight than everything else we've looked at. And to kind of give you a good comparison, the closest thing I can do to get to that weight would be to take this right here and this right here, and that'll put us at 18 pounds. So even this assembly right here is two pounds heavier than this way safe hitch. Pretty crazy. But yeah, the purpose of, of this scale is just the fact that now I have the means of actually showing you guys what things weigh. Because it's so important when it comes to towing. It's so important when it comes to loading up your RV. I know a big one people are going to want me to do, and I might do this in another video, is what does a full propane tank weigh? I have so many folks that are constantly asking me, why does a 30 pound propane tank not weigh 30 pounds? Why does a 20 pound or 40 pound propane tank not weigh 20 or 40 pounds? And I often tell them, what I'm telling you is the material weight, not the weight of the tank itself. An empty propane tank probably weighs 15 pounds, 20 pounds, or possibly even more. Whereas once you put material inside of that tank, you add weight to that. Of course, the weight of the material, which presumably would be the capacity of the tank, a 30, a 40, a 20 pound tank. So, you know, maybe loading up a full propane tank on here would give you guys a pretty good idea of exactly how much propane adds to the overall tongue weight of a vehicle or an RV simply because most RVs except for Jayco products and a few others don't calculate the weight of propane into their tongue weight or their pin weight. So that's what you have to add along with batteries. Here's a great opportunity to weigh different types of batteries, AGM batteries, lead acid batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries, nickel metal batteries. I mean, this gives me a lot of flexibility here. So, you know, guys, give me ideas of things that you think I should use this to weigh because I think it's really important. And the folks at Celaton make a ton of different scales. Some are a lot less expensive than this. Some are more expensive. Some are extremely custom. Some are designed for certain industries. Um, you may, you know, want a scale in your garage that you can park your RV on so you know exactly how much everything weighs before you leave. And I am working with them on a collaboration so we can come up with a product that Big Truck Big RV can be branded on that will give you guys the ability to see specifically how much perhaps your pin weight might be or how much weight you have on your back axles. Let me know what your thoughts are. What would you like me to put on this scale and give you the weight read out of? And I know somebody's gonna wanna know how much all of this stuff weighs together. So I've loaded it all on, 176 pounds. That's crazy, huh? And this isn't really even a lot of stuff, but it just goes to show how heavy stuff can get quickly. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. I will put a link in the description of this video to Celaton if you want to check out some of their products. Maybe get a scale of your own for your own garage or just to weigh your RV when it's in the garage or check your pin weight or your axle weight because they certainly have the products for it and I think you're going to be blown away by the sheer selection of scales that are available on their website. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.